All right, guys. So today the vlog is Q and A. I got Thad Bolonized with me. Hello. Uh, we're gonna answer all of your guys' questions. So super excited. Let's get started. All right, so on today's show, if you want to ask a question in the future, make sure that you use the hashtag the Matt Beck Show or um, send a message, email, direct message, direct message, private message. If you want a private message that you you want anonymous, then just send it through like a direct message. Otherwise, I make a post on Instagram every week, and you can ask the question in the comments below on that. Uh, and that is at Free Salon Education on Instagram. Okay, Heck. so. If you're close enough, send some uh, smoke signals. We'll <laughs> learn. Yeah, exactly. All right. So uh, let's see. I'm just going to go down the list of the questions on Instagram first. Then I have a couple other questions as well as a bonus if we get to it. All right. Jonathan McFerrin on Instagram asks, he says, hey, Matt, I'm getting back into the business after being away for about six years. What advice do you have on ways to build a clientele? Thanks. Uh, this is something that we've definitely gone over yep. uh, quite a bit, but it's the biggest challenge in the industry. And I think the reason that people have such a big challenge with this is their the patient level. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it just takes a while. So my, my thought to you would be the best way to build a clientele, and this is to everybody, this isn't even just to you. The best way to build a clientele is to kill it with every single person that sits in your chair. Th to make sure that you go above and beyond with every single guest. You will win them by word of mouth. You'll get more clients from that. It's the best way to do it. The best way to build a clientele is based on your reputation. Yeah, any marketing class you take there, they'll tell you word of mouth is the best form of marketing. Yeah. You're going to spend, you could spend money on Facebook. That's fine. You can do a lot of other things. You can go hand out business cards, but really, I mean, do you keep a business card if somebody gives it to you? Probably not. Um, but if you target your business card towards your Instagram and maybe you have a really good portfolio on there, that's a different story. What I would do is just get their Instagram and go follow them. I would, um, I would look up people in your town, uh, businesses in your town, uh, start getting involved in the conversations of the businesses in your town on their Facebook pages and become friends with people. Um, I remember 10 years ago when I started, I would go to the bar or whatever, mm -hmm. and that would be kind of the way that you would connect with we new people. We handed out so many business cards. Yeah, we, yeah. We left like piles of them, put put them on, on like tables, and they probably just got thrown out. There. Yeah, no, it no, doesn't. They definitely got thrown out at the end of the night. Like. Exactly. That doesn't work. But if you think about it, the nowadays way of going to the bar is social media. Like, and it's it's better because people can uh, analyze you. I think we're, we're getting. Uh, uh, what are we he's, getting? He's going to just drop it off in the back. Oh, okay. Packages? Yep. Okay. UPS. Um, Amazon. Sweet. Hopefully it's something good. <laughs> uh, so so here's the deal. So the nowadays way of going to the bar, doing things like that, is, is going uh, on social media, go to different people's pages. Think about like how people look you up now. Like yep. I know Christina is like, I've decided she's a professional at finding people on Facebook. She like, a private eye. She literally, so I was going to get flyers, season <laughs> tickets, right? So I, did I, she snipe you out on that? Uh-huh. Did she, did she get them before you? No, but oh, okay. <laughs> so, so I call the, the flyers season ticket hotline, right? Yeah. We start talking to this kid named Asher. So he is super nice. Asher Roth, is it? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> super nice kid from Philadelphia, right? Okay. He's got a big, strong Philadelphia accent. Uh, sounded like a really nice guy. Was telling us, you know, all these benefits of having season tickets and Christina, literally, while that's happening, is finding him on Facebook to make sure that we trust him. <laughs> like, it was like, it's that kind of thing. So think about, like, if, if you get involved in chats in your town. I know there's a New Hope uh, page where it's a group. Yep. So you can get in involved in your town group, start making conversation. People start getting nosy. They start looking you up. All of a sudden, they find out that you're a really good hairstylist, and now they want you to do their hair. That's, another, that's a roundabout way of doing it. To side note on that, like I was always somebody who held on to business cards. Okay. But I've never gone back to them. Like I have like a jar. You have them. Yeah, right. I have them. Yeah. But whenever I needed something, I wouldn't go to like my pile of business cards and like look through and be like, oh, I met so and so at this bar or at this function. No, Google. Yeah. I would just go on and be like hairstylist or 
body paint for cars or stuff like that. Like, yeah, exactly. And that's why I don't even collect business cards anymore. It's not, I right away, if you give me a business card, I will email you my information so that I now have your information and then I just throw the card away. Cause I can't, cause you end up with a pile of them and, and iPhones no one have, wants I don't know. I'm sure droids have a similar function, but iPhones have an amazing feature on them where you create your contact. It will have your cell phone, your uh, email, your like any like business information that you need to have on it. Yeah. And then you can just share contact. Yeah, exactly. So like it's a, it's a virtual business card and then they already have it in their contacts. They have your name, they have, who you're working with or wh- what your company's name is that you've created, yada, yada, yada. And it blows me away the amount of people that ask me for a business card. I know. Still. To and then day. on top of that, once you have their contact in there, you can add notes on that person. So if you're one, like if I met you at IBS, I could put in Matt Beck, IBS, free selling and education booth, uh, he interviewed me or wants to interview me next show stuff like that right it's amazing yeah all right cool so hopefully that helps um but my biggest thing would be take care of the person in your chair and be patient because it takes time to build up but this business and I'm, i'm gonna say it forever the only way to be successful in the hair business is to find a place that you love and stay there because as soon as you start moving around, you lose your clients and you have to kind of start over. Yeah, so I never understood that. Like, like when I first started uh, in school, everybody was like, oh, you have such a nice profession. You can just like get up and go. I'm like, not really. I mean, you can uh, yeah, if you want to yeah. make 20 grand a year yeah, forever. Exactly. I mean, I guess theoretically, like you could like bounce from chain to chain and then right. you're, you're going to steadily have that. Right. But like, yeah, if you're an accountant, like you have an easier chance of like moving around. Right. Like. Everybody needs numbers done. You just work like. Well, everybody needs their hair done too. That's true. It, I mean, it, it would be better if you had a job like, uh, like I don't know. But like, the, uh, you could like be working in Philadelphia for Urban Outfitters Corporate, right? And then be like, I really want to move to uh, San Francisco or San Diego, and then look for a company that's out there that needs an accountant. Apply, get the job, right? And then okay. you're already making that salary or you know what salary you're going to be making that exactly year. yeah you're not starting from you don't have to save this up. is not a salary business nope. all right so angela asks uh she says thank you so much for the information educational videos you're welcome um i was wondering if you have any advice for salon apprentices slash assistants i'm about to graduate cosmetology school and start my apprenticeship at a hair salon i'm going to be starting out doing shampoos and assisting the stylist by cutting foils sweeping etc my goal is to become a stylist at this salon. Thanks. I, I think you're doing what you have to do. Like, yep. you want to be a stylist at that salon? Uh, I would be... Here's what you don't do. And I think that'll be better. Number one thing for me, when I know somebody's not going to work, I, if, if I see... Don't play games on your phone. Don't, don't sit around doing nothing. Every second that you have free, you should be studying something that has to do with your job to help you grow. If they have, if she's going to be an apprentice, like if she had like, you're going to have grunt work. You're like, you're going to yeah. have the cleaning out the drains, cleaning it out, like shampooing, assisting the other stylists. If you have free time, make sure you're staying next to that person that you're yeah. apprenticing. Find and somebody all- that you look up to in the salon that's, that is doing things right, is making money and, and watch them and learn don't just study how they do hair. Study how they are with their clients because there's a reason that they're that busy. Um, and it probably has a lot to do with how they treat people in the salon. Yeah, and if you're being hired as an apprentice, make sure that you're be, uh, you're working at a salon that is going to be working with you. That it's not just hiring you as an apprentice, but it's using you just as an assistant. Right. Cool. Nailed it. Boom. Um, so this one was funny. So this is Shayla Lynn Jones on Instagram. says, do you guys... Are, yeah, do you guys have a daily self-care practice that you'd like to share in regards to taking care of your bodies? <laughs> a way to show up fresh each day uh, because energetically and physically, this job can be quite demanding if one works full-time doing hair. I actually developed one when I first started working here. Before I started working for you and Christina, I was the person who woke up five minutes before I had to leave and I was also five minutes from work. So that means I woke up 10 minutes before I was supposed to be working. Right. Yeah. And I just showed up and just like woke up there. 
I st- uh, it might have been like here. It might have been the age that I was at, but I decided I didn't want to be doing that anymore. Right. And I started waking up about an hour and a half early, getting a cup of coffee, making myself breakfast, waking up like in a peaceful like setting. Yeah. And then going to work. So that way I was like energized and I was ready to go. Yeah. That's a good, I mean, that's a good call. I'm, I'm somebody that is like 10 minutes late for everything. So I'm very, I'm always rushing. Uh, I, the reason I laughed during your question was not because of your question. It was because this is something I'm trying to work on this year <laughs> in my life. I have been uh, starting to get to work earlier, not get to work earlier, but um, starting my day earlier and then uh, and getting some work done prior to coming here. And then, uh, but the problem is I work super late till 2 a.m., 3 a.m. sometimes, um, or sometimes I work till midnight and then I spend till 3 a.m. with Christina because I don't see her mm-hmm. throughout the day as much. Uh, so, it, and I drink Monster all day long, which is a terrible thing to do. So I'm I'm trying to flip that. I do go to the gym now, which helps me feel good. The gym, pretty much. I used to be like such a night person, like like insomnia, like to the max. Yeah. And like as soon as I started going to the gym, like I had a regular bedtime. Like <laughs> it's amazing. Well, <laughs> I think I'm gonna switch my gym time to the night time because. I try to go in the morning and a lot of the times I, I have to get to work and I have to start filming or try to film before the salon opens. It, and the trick to that is that you got to leave a hundred percent on the floor. Like yeah. That you have some people who are like, go to the gym and they're like, okay, you, you need to like, like put like 75% effort in like that way you have energy for like the rest of the day. You have energy to rebuild. Right. No, working out at night, you have to leave a hundred percent on the floor because otherwise you're going to go home and be and, awake and you're going to be awake. Yeah. And, and that's, and I think that that's the challenge of me working out at night is because throughout the day I'm like, go, go, go all day long. Mm-hmm. And then by the time the night comes, I just want to like, yeah, but, but yeah, you, you shouldn't have a problem like leaving a hundred percent on the floor. You don't do anything less than a hundred percent. Well, <laughs> so that, so that's, so that's my shifts that I'm making. I cannot be somebody that tells you, um, how to do daily self-care practices. Um, my self-care practice is do whatever the hell I have to do so that I can keep working as hard as possible. And I'm probably, um, from a health standpoint, not doing well. <laughs> so, uh, but that's changing and we're working on that. All right. Um, so thanks for the question and the, and the reminding that I need to do that <laughs> today. Um, all right. Any suggestions on educational events that you would recommend? Say that again. Any suggestions on any educational events you would recommend? This is from Studio 151 Salon. It's a cool name for some reason. I think because it sounds like Studio 54. I don't know why. Um, All right. So educational events. Here's the thing. It's hard to find. Like, it's not hard to find them. Now I would follow people on Instagram that you like and look look for them to be doing events. I, I think nowadays you don't have to worry about I was gonna uh, say like, like uh, there's no like set scheduled events like in, like to my knowledge like like that like I'd be like really excited about. But if you go out on Instagram like you said, like you have educators like us, you have educators like the Hair House, you have educators like all around, right? That will do in salon stuff, that will host stuff at their salon or at uh, another desti- like destination, and just go have fun, enjoy, learn. Yeah. And it's going to be like focused on the hair. Yeah. I don't think that um, there's a ton of, of companies out there now, not companies, but individuals doing education. So de- definitely just follow them on Instagram. You'll see the flyers. Uh, that would be my recommendation. I don't really have certain people that I'm like, oh, you should go see their education. Because honestly, I, I just don't, I'm not really watching their education that much. Well, so, so I don't what know. What you'd be looking for is different than somebody who's just out of school or right. who may have been in the business for 30 years and is looking for something else. Right. Yeah. The education is definitely something that's very personal that you need to like figure out like what you're looking for and then find that person. For sure. All right. All right. This is from Stephanie on uh, Instagram. She says, Hey Matt, I have some questions. How do you keep track of your income and expenses? How do you budget for your business and how do you pay yourself? Do you, do retail income slash expense a separate way than income from services? Okay, so uh, this is actually a, a cool question because I've made some shifts since I we started the salon and how the salon is now. So how do you keep track of your income and expenses? Um, 
we have an accountant. So I, I recommend that any salon out there, we tried for three years when me and Christina first started the salon to do it on our own. It's a big, gigantic mess. And an accountant keeps everything very organized. And it was always my goal to have a company that is a legit company and will, um, uh, you know, all the records stay the way they're filed the way that they should be. Um, it's, it's hilarious to me because my accountant every year is like, I can't believe you claim that much in tips because everybody's tips go in there f- mm-hmm. from their credit cards. So um, she's like, I, I just can't believe that you that you do it. She's like, I'm happy that you do, but a lot of salons don't uh, because it's a big tax. I mean, you get taxed a lot of money. Obviously, everybody knows yeah, that. Yeah, but I mean, like, but you, you, if you're going to plan on buying a house, that's only going to help yeah, you. Yeah, but you want to buy a house and you want to be able to do different things and um, and – you're building a business and a business is something for me that you're growing a business. You never know what's going to happen. If you ever wanted to sell your business someday or you want to do whatever, Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to show uh, everything that's coming in. How do you budget your business and how do you pay yourself? Um, Uh, I have actually a follow up question before. Okay. So we've always like, 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 cause you've had a question like this, like before and you're you're just like hire an account. And then like, I've always like people who've like come to me and said, Hey, like, do you, I know you don't own a salon, but, do you have any advice for it? I'm like, hire an account. What do you look for in an accountant? I mean, I have an accountant, but I got one because my friend who owns a business had that accountant. And Isn't your dad an accountant? No. <laughs> I thought your dad was an accountant. He works in finance, but oh, okay. he's not an accountant. He just does yeah. Dre's taxes. Correct, but okay. I can't sit with my dad for that <laughs> length of time doing work, like, like okay. stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, so I've gone through, uh, we started off with a good accountant, and then decided to take things on our own. Um, then I had a recommendation for an accountant from one of our clients here, and I started with them. It was the worst experience of my life. Like mm-hmm. we went all of a sudden, like one year they were like, "You owe fifteen grand in taxes Ooh. at the end of the year," and uh, and then the next year it was eight grand in taxes. So then all of a sudden I'm I'm twenty five grand in debt to the IRS and. And then I got a good accountant and they cleared it all up. Oh, so really it turned out that the accountant wasn't doing any of their work whatsoever and wasn't doing any write-offs or anything, just getting through it. And uh, so be very careful. Um, you know, try somebody out for a year. If it seems crazy, though, get a second opinion for sure. Um, because for the, the majority of it, like... Even if they do a terrible job, all your paperwork's done, so you can take it to somebody else to analyze it and make sure that they did it right if it seems wrong. Um, how do you pay yourself? I, uh, For the first f- five years of the business, I didn't pay myself from that. That's why I do education events and I teach. Um, I started the, the Free Salon Education website. I still, to this day, do not take a paycheck from any income that I do based on the salon it's just not the way that i i like to work i like to reinvest whether it's in um the remodel that we're going to do or uh the trips that we take or the dinners that we do i just reinvest everything back in to the business for now i understand that that's not the way that everyone can work it's just the way that it works for me um if i was going to pay myself i would pay myself exactly like i pay everyone else because that would be how the business model would work. So if you're doing hair five days a week, I would pay yourself your commission for doing hair. And uh, if there's stuff left over at the end of the quarter, then you could write yourself a check for that. But always write yourself a check so you don't owe money in the end. Uh, Do you do retail income slash expenses separate? This was something that uh, a long time ago I learned that maybe you should take a separate retail account from your main account uh, and then so every dollar you make from retail would go into one account and every dollar you make from services goes into the other so that you see the retail account constantly growing. I always thought this was a good idea. Never did it. Um, but I, I definitely think it's a good idea. I mean, when we, honestly, when we first started the salon, I couldn't even afford to buy retail. So we had literally like maybe 100 bottles on the <laughs> shelf at a time. Um, so, you know, it's just a whole different world now. I could probably start that account and I would, uh, I would see it. But if you had like 1500 bucks 
to throw into a take home account or retail account and then you buy your retail from that and then take every bit of money that comes from your retail sales and put it back into that account watch it grow and only buy your retail out of that account would be kind of cool uh to do it's definitely something that i'm i would like to do later um, that would be really good for like the show me people, the, the people that like have to see like see the income yeah. coming up. I mean, I learned it from a product company from Paul Mitchell, so uh, I mean, it makes sense yeah. that they want to teach you that. So, oh, yeah. uh, but I but I do think it's a good idea. All right, cool. So that's pretty much it. Do you feel good? I feel good. So that's the Q&A. I hope you guys liked it. Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button and uh, check out our videos pretty much every day. Follow Thad. Thad Bolognized. And follow us, everything at Free Salon Education. And don't forget, you can ask those questions right on social media. Or uh, smoke signals. Yeah, or smoke, or smoke signals. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks.